up and down the length and breadth of the New England states, from northern Maine to Long Island Sound, from Cape Cod to Lake Champlain, civilian defense organizations composed of your friends and your neighbors are hearing the call to action. For New England's air defense, liaison between the telephone company and the National Defense Communications Board is in charge of Myron D. Chase, who will tell us about the defense plans. Mr. Chase. The part the telephone plays in air defense may be classified under three general headings. Air Raid Warning Service, Air Raid Alarming Service, and Air Raid Precaution Service. In connection with the Air Raid Warning Service, civilian observers watch the flight of incoming planes and report over regular telephone facilities to a centralized point known as the Army Information Center, data in regard to these planes. This data is plotted upon a map and used by the Army to determine the type of military defense to set up against the Raiders. One of the functions of the Army Information Center is to send warnings for the protection of civilian life and property over regular telephone lines to a centralized point known as a district warning center. From this point, these warnings are sent to all report centers in its district and warnings to essential industries such as hospitals, utilities, key industries, fire, police, railroads, and public sirens. Air raid warning services and air raid alarming services are associated with defense against incoming aircraft. Air raid precaution services go into operation when the bombs drop. Wardens stationed throughout the town telephone the extent of the damage and number of casualties to a central point called a report center. The report center dispatches, rescue squads, fire engines, ambulances, telephone and other utility trucks to take care of the damage and look after the casualties. In case the damage is such that it exceeds the available facility, the report center may appeal to its district warning center for additional aid. As a safeguard against damage to the telephone system, couriers are to be used to supplement the communication system in case of failure. Under the present organization, these couriers will be Boy Scouts. We will now see a demonstration of ARP in action as practiced in Newton, Massachusetts during recent maneuvers. Bursting bombs have caused no fires like this in America but we introduced this picture to show the kind of a scene wardens might meet when on duty. In actual practice, long before the fire reached these proportions, alert wardens would have telephoned the details to a report center. This warden knows where to find the nearest telephone. He knows the number of his own report center. With the accuracy of a camera lens and the brevity of a news flash, he reports all necessary details of the damage. Alert ears at waiting telephones receive the warden's report. This room will have few or many telephones depending on the size of the community and the number of wardens who will report. Volunteer operators will man these telephones whenever wardens are at their posts so that reports can be handled immediately. Let's watch this operator record the details of our practice incident. It is incident number five of the day's catastrophes. Quickly, she notes the date and time, the location of the damage. She checks the bomb as incendiary. The casualties is four, none of them trapped under wreckage. Other checks indicate fire has broken out, that water and gas mains are intact, and that three streets are blocked. The original copy of the report stays in the telephone room. Three carbon copies are distributed to the chief warden, the plotting officer, and the file clerk. The report form completed, the operator hands it quickly to a scout who rushes it to the chief warden located in an adjoining room 
which is the main headquarters of the report center for each community. At the door of the report center, another scout takes the incident report and hands it to the chief warden. He immediately begins to read the details for the information of the officials around the table so that no time will be lost in sending assistance. The report center force springs to action with the first words from the chief warden as the scout takes copies of the incident report to the plotting officer and the file clerk. Dominating every report center is the map of the area under its protection. As incidents are reported, the location and extent of the damage are plotted on the map with colored identification pens so that the condition of the community is evident at a glance to the officials seated around the table. Above the map are the red, yellow, and blue lamp signals, which show the state of alarm as received from the Army by way of the district warning center. Even as all this is going on, representatives of essential services are taking quick action. The fire department representative at the distant end of the table has already dispatched the necessary pieces of apparatus to the danger point from which the warden reported incident number five only a few seconds before. Because of the possibility of additional fires, the entire department is not sent to one incident. The medical aid representative sends immediate help for the casualties reported by the warden who discovered the fire, and an ambulance roars from its station to aid the wounded. Special plans for hospitalization and emergency shelter immediately go into operation. Typical of the method by which division heads keep track of the equipment which they have sent out and that which is available for further duty is this shifting of pens on the dispatch boards in front of the officials. Grouped in front of the chief warden in every report center are representatives of what we have come to consider the essential community services. They are here because they are the foundations of community life. They are more than that. They are the quarterbacks of the successful civilian defense team, calling the plays and directing the defensive action of the minute man of today. On their experience and judgment depend the effectiveness of a great team of air raid wardens, regular and auxiliary fire and police departments, first aid and rescue workers, and others of the civilian defense organization. Even the record part of civilian defense operates efficiently with a complete file on every incident. No community can be self-sufficient in time of crisis. In order to provide for the immediate interchange of help, every report center has a reservoir of additional equipment available through its district warning center. It was from this point that the original warning of the raid was received and sent out. Guiding the operation of the district warning center is the controller who moves his defensive forces between communities to meet appeals for help from report centers in his territory. Typical of the scene in hundreds of New England communities is this story of civilian organization. Ready to protect their homes and their families from the horrors of warfare, these defense workers present an inspiring picture of the unity which a great crisis always brings. They hope they'll never be called on to serve, but on their training and their devotion may depend the safety of all that we cherish. Music